it might come as an astonishment, or not one by any stretch of the imagination, that the dirtiest spot in your home is your kitchen wipe. In spite of its principal use being to clean, your wipe has an expected 321,629,869 microorganisms living in each gram of your wipe. As indicated by an investigation, an expected 75% of dish wipes had salmonella, E. coli, and fecal issue within the wipe a stunning rate, considering a washroom fixture just has 9%. The investigation likewise found that 86% of wipes additionally harbor yeast and shape and another 18% have staph microbes. You ought to consider discarding your wipes like clockwork, and meanwhile you can clean your wipe by absorbing it a bowl of water and a limited quantity of blanche. On the off chance that you are against wipes as a rule, you can exchange your wipes for a dish cloth. Simply recollect your cloth should be clean similarly as regularly. Tossing it in a boiling water cycle with some sanitizer will help work. It probably won't enter your thoughts when you're getting your toothbrush how much microorganisms has collected on it. In any case, before you put that toothbrush in your mouth, consider the last time you've cleaned it, in the event that you have, and its area in your washroom. The normal toothbrush is a hotbed for various microbes, for example, shape and yeast, just as staph and coliform. Also the measure of fecal containing matter that can assemble because of its nearness to the can. By and large, there are 2,465,876 bacterial life forms situated on your toothbrush holder. From that point, the microscopic organisms can without much of a stretch spread. You can wash your toothbrush in boiling water with cleanser two times every week, making a point to flush it completely and clean the region as frequently as could reasonably be expected. It is suggested that you likewise store your toothbrush in less open spaces to keep away from tainting. Cutting sheets can come into contact with a wide range of microscopic organisms, regardless of whether it be from your crude meat, or the foods grown from the ground you're cutting up. In any case, without avoiding potential risk, your cutting board can turn into a harbor for these various microorganisms. Cutting sheets that aren't appropriately kept up can harbor a normal of 18% of coliform microorganisms and 14% of yeast and shape. While this may not appear to be a ton, cutting loads up are multiple times bound to contain fecal microscopic organisms than a can situate. This is because of not avoiding potential risk, particularly on the grounds that microscopic organisms can increase in the furrows and scars brought about by blades. You can clean your plastic sheets by putting them in the dishwasher during a cycle and screen the wear on the board. On the off chance that you have a wooden board, you can drench the board with a detergent and water blend, or a vinegar and water blend, for just a couple of moments before flushing it with boiling water and permitting it to air dry. It is suggested that you utilize separate cutting sheets, if conceivable, for various kitchen things. While this may not come as a shock to many, your kitchen sink is dirtier than you may understand. A normal kitchen sink holds around 4,945 microorganisms for each square inch, which is around multiple times a greater number of microbes than what is found on your can deal with. Truth is stranger than fiction, due to the measure of use of your sink, regardless of whether it be crude meat to food left in your refrigerator, your sink is a rearing ground for microscopic organisms in view of the sodden condition it gives and the food that can help feed the microbes which develops. Also the cleanser stores which can frame. Around 45% of sinks have coliform microbes and 27% tried positive for the nearness molds. Actually, there is more E. coli found in your kitchen sink than in a latrine previously or after utilization. Cleaning your sink is significant. Contingent upon your sink type, you can fill it with warm water and a limited quantity of fate and let it sit for a couple of moments before depleting it. You can likewise scour your sink by utilizing a blend of lemon and powdered borax to get the alcoves and crevices of your sink and help with any scents. Espresso producers may give what props us up however they likewise can be a rearing ground for various kinds of microscopic organisms. In an examination, Half of espresso producers tried had form and yeast and microscopic organisms, for example, Staphylococcus, Streptococcus, and Bacillus cereus, 
just as an amassing of grime development because of absence of support. An espresso producer, regardless of whether it be a trickle creator or a Keurig, ought to be cleaned routinely, because of the wet condition being a reproducing ground for microscopic organisms. While it might appear to be a problem to dismantle the creator, remember that an espresso producer supply alone can gather around an expected 84,982 for each every square inch of microscopic organisms. One approach to clean the repository particularly, is to include 4 cups of vinegar and let it sit for 30 minutes before preparing it. You should mix it until the vinegar is gone, at that point run a couple of patterns of water to get out any waiting aromas or vinegar follows. A neglected viewpoint in cleaning one's kitchen may be one of its fundamental zones of traffic, the oven handles. For some, the highest point of the oven becomes routine in light of the fact that the chaos can't miss. In any case, some may ignore the handles of oven, despite the fact that microorganisms is similarly prone to be found on the handles all things considered on the oven. Truth be told, 14% of oven handles have coliform microorganisms, while proof found that 33% of oven handles were canvassed in shape and yeast. The greater part of this is because of the way that regularly hands aren't washed in the wake of contacting various things in your home, or much in the wake of hacking or sniffling, and the microscopic organisms is spread to the handles. To keep away from this, if conceivable, evacuate the handles and absorb them high temp water blended in with cleanser once per week. On the off chance that you can't evacuate the handles, clean them once every week by utilizing an assigned family unit cleaner, guaranteeing that you wipe them completely. Sadly, so as to clean your hands in the wake of utilizing the bathroom, you'll have to contact the sink spigot handles first. Along these lines, a large number of different microscopic organisms are passed to the handles, causing your endeavors at cleaning somewhat purposeless as you to need to kill the spigot once you are finished washing your hands. In a family unit's restroom, 27% of the sinks were found to have shape and some even tried positive for staff. There is an expected measure of 2,786 microbes found on a restroom fixture handle for each every square inch. It is prescribed to wipe down your handles day by day with either disinfectant wipes, shower, or with a detergent and water blend. While this may not come as a stun, your kitchen counters harbor an assortment of microscopic organisms because of their consistent cooperation with day-by-day -day living. Around 32% of kitchen counters have unsafe microscopic organisms, 18% of which have a place with various molds. This can be a difficult issue since microorganisms can be spread effectively, particularly in the event that you normally contact your face. Truth be told, the basic virus can be passed by just coming into contact with a contaminated zone and afterwards scouring your eye. What exacerbates it is cleaning the ledge with a pre-owned dishcloth or wipe, particularly since a dishcloth or wipe is viewed as the dirtiest spot in your kitchen. You can clean your counters somewhere around utilizing a family unit cleaner, or with a sanitizer and water arrangement. On the off chance that your counter requires exceptional consideration because of its material, it is best encouraged to look through what cleaners will be protected to utilize and won't cause harm to your counter. It may not enter your thoughts when you reach to turn on the TV, change the channel, or modify the volume what microscopic organisms you are coming into contact with in the wake of contacting the remote. Because of the high traffic some remotes can have, regardless of whether it be from youngsters to grown UPS, it skirts most families' brains to clean the remote also when cleaning the house. It is, be that as it may, imperative to clean the remote as 55% of remotes tried positive for having both yeast and form. Cleaning a remote can be straightforward, for example, utilizing a sterilizing wipe or making a scouring liquor and water blend and cleaning the remote down with a paper towel. Remember to take out the batteries and clean inside the compartment too. For some, trash jars are really not as grimy as you may might suspect, because of the way that waste packs which line the refuse would itself be able to have gotten generally well known. In any case, refuse packs don't generally hold up to the measure of waste that can amass in your family. They are powerless to tearing and flooding, permitting the substance to spill out into the refuse can itself. In different cases, overloading the can may make refuse arrive at the cover and increase on the underside. 
there is an expected 400 microbes for each every square inch of your trash can, which probably won't be as much as your wipe or your cutting board yet at the same time can prompt proceeded with form and yeast development. You should clean your trash can each month, which should be possible by splashing it down with a detergent and water blend, and washing it out in your bath. It is additionally imperative to recollect that it's not simply the can itself that should be cleaned, yet in addition the space where it sits. Microorganisms can move from moving the sack out of the trash can. It is prescribed to clean the zone with a family or floor more clean. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to the channel.